from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. It is Beat the Champs week two here at Transit Lanes. Thanks for joining us. My name is Paul Peck with Hall of Fame bowler Sue Nowitzki along with Janelle Saban. We can only hope, Sue, that week two here at Transit Lanes was as exciting as week one. Well, 260 is a big average to try to keep up, but we have some good bowlers really ready to take him on and see if they can take him down. It's Matt Sazowski with that amazing performance in week one that is our returning champion. He will match up against three bowlers today. Steve Dorbiala, John Stobnicki and Jeff Pullman. Big crowds expected as we continue to tape here at Transit Lanes. Are you handling that OK, Janelle? I think I can do it. We got a lot of new people in the crowd, but I can show them how to clap their hands. <laughs> I know you'll be able to do that. So we had that amazing week one. Can Matt Sazowski keep that incredible streak alive? Let's find out. Let's get rolling. The first challenger for Matt Zazowski will be that gentleman on the right, Steve Dorbiala. But Zazowski will begin. And Sue, uh, we talked about the 267 average with wins over Pat Brick and Mike Zarcone in the first week. So this is now Matt Zazowski's ninth different appearance on Beat the Champ. He's an overall record of 10 wins and five losses. And his five weekly wins are now the most of anybody on Beat the Champ. Well, we've seen the benefit of all of his experience and knowledgeable um, of lane conditions and how they change and making ball changes. And we've really seen bowling at its best for Maddie. And it looks like it's about to continue, doesn't it? <laughs> Um, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, Matt took on some really high level, high profile bowlers in that first match. I'm sure you rise to the occasion of your competition. Um, not quite the same level of bowlers here in this w appearance. How does that change Matt's mindset? Well, you know what? You're absolutely right. That's a great analogy because you do get uh, hyped up and for what you know is going to be a great match. And, you know, maybe you would take somebody a little bit lighter if you didn't think you're quite at that same level. So we'll see how he responds to that. Yeah, and Steve Dorbiala will be certainly happy if that's the case. Well, we're happy to be joined here by the lane manager at Transit Lanes, a long time. Can we call you a fixture here at Transit Lanes, Bill Truman? Uh, you could. I've been here a while. <laughs> He's a fixture in the bowling community. That is true. That is very true. Well, Bill, thanks for joining us to give us a little, uh, a little help with some of the action, a little bit of perspective on what you got going on here at Transit Lanes. And you've already been dishing out a lot of cash to some of our bowlers in the first week. Give us your summation on what you saw in week number one. Well, Mayhew's just lined up. I mean, he has a great shot, but the ones that he bowled against also had great shots. It comes down to a carry contest. And, uh, unfortunately, some corner pins stood for, for his opposition, but uh, he did bowl excellent. And I know when you were just talking about that, sometimes there is a letdown uh, after you bowl really well. Uh, I know on Sue will probably mention it, you know, like if we're bowling in a match play and somebody throws 300 and that's the person you're bowling the next, you almost want to because there's sometimes a letdown. But Matty, uh, I'm not sure there's going to be a letdown. He's, uh, he's, he's a pretty machine. focused into what he wants to do today. He, he so. is a machine. 41 years old from Tonawanda, full-time profession as a cook for Matt Zazowski. He has been bowling since he's 13 years old, and he is one of the top bowlers in all of Western New York, who is also a, a regular competitor on the PBA regional tours and just a couple weeks ago coming back from the USBC Masters. So, uh, And they're in frame number two. Matt leaves a pin, which is always Always a bit of a surprise when we see that happen. Yeah, but you know, it was a little slower speed on that one, and again, it's, it feels yes, it like was. a little bit of a of a come down after all the momentum and all the. For sure, and and Steve gave him a lot of credit. I mean, there was a little bit of a break there, and he came out and thrown a double right off the bat. So, um, and now Maddie missed, and uh, we'll see what Steve does. He put a little pressure on him right away. Well, if you were with us for last week's show, you saw the similar thing happened in the match against Mike Sarcone, where Steve or Matt missed, left the open frame by missing the one pin spare. We thought that was going to be the critical, crucial moment in the match, but as it turns out. Mike opened the door to him again, and then Matt rolled his way out with strikes to win. So he seems to be able to overcome what you might not think is overcomable sometimes. And it's early in the game, too. Right. Sure. So there's a lot of frames left for both bowlers. So let's see how Matt balances out the open frame. And does it exactly the way you want to with a strike? Well, Matt actually started this match with the same ball that he finished the last match with. and. 
all last week, as he bowled, he changed balls. Every game he had to change balls. And so he opted to start out this today with um, the ball he finished with last week, and he already made a quick ball change here. <laughs> yes, he has. And there are the stats on Steve Dorbiala from West Seneca, 38 years old, owner of a landscaping company. He has been bowling for 30 years and a very nice, solid 227 average. This is Steve's second appearance on Beat the Champ. His first appearance came at Tonawanda Lanes, and he wound up losing to Mike Zarcone. So, uh, how about how about welcome to the show, Steve? Your first two matches are against Zarcone and Zazowski. <laughs> well, it's hard not to meet one of those two when you when you make beat the champ. <laughs> They've been on quite frequently. And so. Well, I was going to say, right, you, 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 there's a pretty 50 50 chance you're going to wind up with one of those guys on the show no matter what. Yes, you are. So, Steve's got to pull off the spare here in frame number three. That shot looked like he got it in a little bit, a little bit right of his target. And so now we've got some matching e open frames in the first three with uh, both guys unable to pick up the single pin spares. So, Bill, what's, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time in the first week talking about the lane conditions, what the, 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 the tricky corner pins here at Transit Lanes. You've spent an awful lot of time here. What, what have you learned about the characteristics of this place? Well, in different parts of the house, it, it definitely plays a little differently. And, and again, it's, it's a lot the bowlers, too, because... There are some bowlers that will like the higher end of the house, uh, and there are other ones that like the lower end of the house. So, uh, you know, it's amazing that they're all the same length, and they're all the same width, and they're all oiled the same way, but they do play differently. And this feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. I'm with Steve Dorbiella coming in and we are take our first match on our champion, Matt Zazowski, who posted a 260 plus average last week. What are you thinking today when you have to come on and take scores like that? Um, well, there's really no pressure now. He's pulled over 800 the first three games and uh, just try to take him down, I guess. It's David against Goliath and maybe the story holds true. That's an interesting way to look at it. So what was your qualifying score coming in today? Uh, 710. Did you find these lanes to stay pretty consistent, or did you find them to change as you uh, went along? No, I say they stayed pretty consistent. Um, it was only one other lefty today, so maybe that would help me out. Maybe a little bit. The shots holding up, so. I really, I wasn't there. Rick filled in for me. It was when the year that I had my knee replacement. That's right. So, that's right. Uh, his son and I that's often right. room together, uh, Ricky. And unfortunately, that year I had a knee replacement done and was unable to bowl. So we talked his dad into a chance for him and his uh, his son to bowl together. And Great. that's what happened that year in uh, Vegas. Unfortunately, I missed that trip, but oh, uh, that, but they had yeah. a good time. But they had a. It was nice for him to be able to bowl with his son. I know how that was with my dad was bowling. It was always nice to bowl with. Him. So I know it, was, it worked out really well that year, and, uh, and he's a, a past beat the champ person. Right, yes. which he'll talk, uh, talk to us about. Oh, yeah, so, going back uh, a long ways, yes. but a very one of the more successful beat the champ players from back in the old days. So we'll talk to Rick in our second match, but we've got this one to be determined first. And Steve Dorbiala with a pair of strikes here in seven and eight, continuing to put the pressure on Matt Zazowski, who's on a run of five consecutive strikes. I'll tell you, I'm very happy to see high scores coming out of here. That's always as a manager. <laughs> I'm sure, we, of course. We like to see good scores and our bowlers when they watch and see that, you know, maybe where, where these people are playing, that maybe some of our bowlers need to make an adjustment to how they handle uh, what they see on the lanes out here. Now, granted, these are very good bowlers out here. Not that some of our league bowlers aren't, but we try to make as nice a shot for them also uh, so they enjoy the game of bowling. But you know how you said that? Generally, when your release point is the same, mm -hmm. regardless of how you get there, three points are also very similar, too. So um, you have to figure out how you throw the ball and how you need to get to that break point. But the break point is generally the same. So when you watch these watch these guys and you see them, you know, hitting, like, closer to the third arrow down the lane, just because you might want to play to the right of the second arrow, the shot may be closer to the third arrow. So how you get there is kind of your game, but they're kind of showing us where the breakpoints are. Yes, they are. And 
You know, and that's what's great about being the champ. It's so nice that the bowlers get to see, they get to watch on TV and see where some of the best bowlers play. And, uh, and everybody plays the lane a little bit differently, but maybe it'll, it'll open their eyes to something they may want to try down the road. So. Right. And if you're watching and you want to be a part of Beat the Champ, qualifying for our next month's set of shows is going on this weekend at Lucky Lanes in Fredonia with an added twist to it. The top qualifier in the top 24 wins a brand new television worth $500 from Dirt Cheap TV. So another reason for you to get down to Fredonia this weekend. All the details on the times are on our Facebook page um, at, for all the qualifying that's going on both Saturday and Sunday this weekend at Lucky Lanes in Fredonia. Right, with the uh, the match play being um, Sunday, March 12th at 7 p.m. And a late fall on the 10 pin gets a third consecutive strike for Steve Dorbiala. But I don't know that, Sue, that he's too far behind here as Matt Zazowski is on a run of seven consecutive strikes following that open frame. Well, he needs to he needs to throw all three of these, and you know you never know what's going to happen. I mean, right now, Matty looks pretty locked in, but no matter what, he's got to throw these three to try and put a little pressure on him. At least make him think. And well, now we that, saw that, that happen. That open didn't seem to bother him too much. No, nope. <laughs> and we saw that happen in the last match against Zarcone, where we thought Mike was on his way to a win, and uh, and that was a great shot. That was a great shot. For One of the sure. true taps in bowling for the left-hander or the right-hander, the eight or the nine. When we leave those, right. it's, mm -hmm. you know, you expect a seven or a ten occasionally. Not that we want them, right? But that was an awfully good shot. So that spare here in the 10th frame for Steve Dorbiala probably clinches this one, doesn't it? It does. Again, so, he's going to throw a very nice game, though. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's got to be pleased with his effort. A couple of balls could have carried a little better, would have been a little higher. But again, he ran into a very strong bowler right now. Well, and that's, the, and that's where we're at now. You know, a 213 is a good, solid performance, but not the way Matt Zazowski is bowling when the kind of numbers that he's putting up. But um, you've got to be in that close to that 250 range to, to compete with Matt the way things are going for him now. So 10th frame for Matt Zazowski to finish out and post another winning score. And that is eight in a row strikes for Zazowski. And, if he gets a couple of more, that'll be yet another ridiculously good performance of only an open frame in the second, marring the entire run that you can see on the Castellone scoreboard. I think we've seen a little bit, though, what the value of bowling balls are. I mean, oh, Maddie has had to change balls. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been able to stay generally in the same spot, but he's kept it by changing the bowling balls Turns instead the ball of. So he could stay where he was and get the same reaction on the other end. Right. So Matt Zazowski going to come up with a win here after one more uh, ball to post up a final score. Next up, John Stop Nicky, another regular here at Transit Lanes that you guys both know well. Give us an early scouting report on John. John turns the ball up pretty good. So, uh, you know, I haven't seen him bowl recently, but I know that I have seen him. He throws the ball very well. And uh, again, it'll be a, it's, it's going to look like it's going to be a carry contest. Well, you just heard a great round of applause there for Matt Zazowski as he finishes with 10 consecutive strikes for another big 267 score, correct? 267. Oh, that's just, that's just his average. He's just <laughs> shooting his average. His average. I mean, it's big amazing. Deal. Pretty nice average. <laughs> What a, what a run that Matt is on four in a row with an average of 267. I don't know what to I don't know what Steve Dorbial is going to say about that one, but we'll find out. We'll talk to Steve and preview our next match when Beat the Champ continues. The Matt Zazowski show continues from here at Transit Lanes right after this. Another good performance by Steve Dorbiala. Unfortunately, you have run into the hottest bowler on Beat the Champ right now. That that puts a lot of pressure on you, doesn't it? Uh, it does, yeah. He gave me a little opening in the beginning, and fortunately I gave it right back to him. And 
the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, well, you you and I were joking. Two career matches here on the show. You've gone against Zazowski and Zarcon. We promise the next time you're on the show, there will be no, no Z's in the yeah, last name. Yeah. No more Z's. That's <laughs> A or B, it's fine. But right, well, we do have some dollar signs for you, and Bill's going to take care of that. Congratulations. Thank you. Glad you made the show, and uh, I'm sure you'll be back. You throw the ball very well. Thank you. Good job. All right, Thank Steve, you. good work. Uh, keep it up. We'll see you again here soon. Uh, Matt Zazowski continues his amazing run. Next up, John Stobb, Nikki. We'll get that match for you when Beat the Champ continues right after this. I'm here with John Stubb, Nikki. He'll be taking on today's show, second week here at Transit Lanes. Uh, what do you see out there when you came here to qualify? Uh, they were pretty oily. Uh, I had to stay soft with it. Tough shot. Um, I don't know if they're anything like the practice pair, but the practice pair seems a lot, a lot drier than they were during the... Uh... I know you bowl here in the summertime in the summer sweeper, and you've had a, a pretty good luck over there. So maybe familiar with the bowling center? Very familiar. I uh, grew up here, actually. So, uh, yeah, uh, definitely comfortable here. Okay, well, good luck today. Next challenger up for Matt Zazowski, the gentleman on the right. His name is John Stopnicki. We'll talk more about John in a moment, but let's talk a little more about Matt. I think you you think I've run out of stuff to talk about. Well, how about Matt now has won four in a row with an average of 267. He has now won 11 beat the champ matches against only five losses. And if he wins this match, he will tie Mike Zarcone for the most wins on Beat the Champ, or at least this version of Beat the Champ, and I'll explain why I differentiate that in just a moment when we talk with our special guest. So here's Matt Zazowski to try to keep the roll going, and what else would you expect but a strike in the first frame, and then we get our first look at John Stobnicki from Buffalo, 34 years old, car inspector for Amtrak. He is making his Beat the Champ debut, but as we talked about in our last match, he is a regular here at Transit Lanes. You know him well, so. Well, he grew up bowling here, and um, you know I've seen him in the Summer Sweeper uh, over the years, and uh, he's just an all-around really good bowler. And he may be the tallest bowler we've ever had on Beat the Champ at six foot six. And you can see the big arm swing and the power and the strike on his first match, on his first frame. Well, we are certainly pleased to welcome in one of the legends in Buffalo bowling. It's okay, Rick, we can call you that. You've earned that. Rick Musilowski, for a couple of reasons. Rick it goes dates back to the early 70s on Beat the Champ, one of the great runs in this show's history back then. We want to talk to Rick a little bit about that. And he taught Sue everything she knows as his coach <laughs> at Buffalo State. So, Rick, thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. This came back for old nostalgia. <laughs> well, what's it like for you to come back and see the show back on the air? What kind of memories does it bring to mind for you when you competed on this show back in the 1970s? When I first saw it on television, I was so glad that it's back. And then you start thinking. And you go back, 1970, December 5th, I shot the 800 against Nin Angelo, and it was just terrific. Every place I go, uh, people watch it. A lot of people watch these shows, and it's important that it's back. Well, whenever you beat Nin Angelo, you automatically vault to celebrity status this time. <laughs> he, was, he was a tough man to beat. He was not a sore loser. But he didn't want to lose. And I learned a lot from him doing that. I'm not a sore loser, but I sure don't want to lose. So I want to pay attention and do what I'm supposed to do. So you were, you were telling me before, was it 19 weeks that you competed yes. here on the show? Yes, it was 19 weeks. Uh, they did have professionals come in. One, one professional come in the first week when we changed from Truway to Leisureland. And uh, I, I lost, but you always stay. The, the professional is not mm -hmm. going to be here. Now, Nin had a few on his, his, his group. I don't know how many. But that, I learned a lot. I learned a lot because you, you're sitting there talking with these professionals, and they're giving you some information. Well, I'm 25 years old at that, thinking I know the world, and you don't. <laughs> right. 
Um, what I, I'm sure the biggest thing that jumps out at you, and I know we've talked a lot to a lot of, of former Beat the Champ competitors, is obviously the big difference between then and now is you bowled in series, and here these guys are bowling one game shots. Exactly, exactly. That, that, that's the format was what it was. Uh, this is a good format. It opens up more people to have a chance to perform, and, and, and that's what this is all about. As for Sue, Sue was a good bowler. Sue was a very good bowler. She's still a good bowler. But, well, what do you remember about what he used to he, teach you? No, you know what's what's really, really, what really comes to mind, and um, it kind of goes along with what he just said about the professionals um, talking to you if you're open to listening to it. And even Jack alluded to it with Maddie going out and competing on a national level and bullying the Masters against them. If you're if you're open to listening. Mm. Um, there's a, a tremendous amount of information that people will will give you, and you were you were that for me. Yeah, you and Roy would spend time probably asking what was pretty dumb questions to them, you know. But to understand reading your equipment in those in those days, it was top weight and side weight, and and you know there's still a challenge with figuring out bowling balls, less choices than there were today. Very much but, so. Um, yeah. He, he, his timing is down now. He, his bet leverage, his call yep. leverage is working. Four in a row to open up the match for John Stobnicki, as you saw Matt Zazowski with a spare in the third. So at least early on, John's putting as much pressure as anybody has on Matt Zazowski. All right, we, we know Sue and we love her because she's spunky. Is that a good word, Rick? What was she like when she was a young college bowler? She was quite the same. There are times you have to calm them down <laughs> to do what they're supposed to do. They know what to do, but you get going and you get frustrated, aggravated. Calm down, take a deep breath, remember what you have to do, go out and do it. Do it soft. I always worried about getting them soft. <laughs> the, 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 more, the more strikes they get, the harder they want to go, and that's natural. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Well, this, uh, when I, during our era, the teams that we were, I was bowling with were very good. We bowled a lot of different houses, and I was a firm believer when we traveled for tournaments, if you can, no matter what you find, you've seen it in Buffalo one time. So that helped. We were more accurate, but now you've got a lot of power players. Power players will throw a lot of strikes. The point is, they better make spares. Right. That was power. That, that was power. Yep, a very powerful seventh frame strike for John Stob Nicky to he keep. He needs to go off the sheet. To keep the pressure on as we look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. It's a solid lead at the moment for Matt Zazowski, but as Rick said, if John can go keep off the striking out and put pressure on it, we'll yeah. see how Matt responds. He needs to just get that good leverage at the release. That's that's his strong point. So you've got no good entertaining stories about <laughs> Sue Nowoyski as a college bowler for us, huh? No, no. I, I, I she wish. was perfectly behaved. Why do I find that hard to believe? <laughs> no. <laughs> when she was on the lanes, that was what she was supposed to do. When we went to eat, the girls had a good time. They had fun. They, we went to tournaments and they wanted to go to different places. No. You just stay here. We bowl. What you do on your own time when you go home is fine. <laughs> We had a good team, though. We had a good mix of girls. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Strike in the eighth frame for Matt Zazowski. And uh, my good friend, Kathy Geisler, who I still bowl with on Wednesday nights here in league. And, you know, we still stay doing many things together. Um, you know, that great friendship was formed um, on the lanes in the Buffalo State. That's great. That's awesome. It was a good group of ladies, and there was a couple ladies that didn't have strong talent. Didn't have strong talent, but they worked real hard and they wanted to help. 
That's Don't. where you say about making the spares. You know, it's like even if if you didn't throw a ton of strikes, your spares were um, were always a help. You know, the spares, the spares in my era would always keep your average up. You're going to get strikes, but you got to fill the frames. <clears throat> On a bad day in a bad house, try to get out of there with 570, 575, 580, mm -hmm. and give them heck the next day. Mm -hmm. So you saw the ninth frame here, spare opportunity for Matt Zazowski. Don't want to forget that qualifying for next month's series of shows at Lucky Lanes of Fredonia are going on right now this weekend. And don't forget, top qualifier, added bonus, $500 value, new television from Dirt Cheap TV uh, to the top qualifier for this weekend's results down there. Our taping for the next month's series of shows in Fredonia will come up on March 26th. This is a big strike here. This is important. This is very important. So the pressure on John Stob Mickey here in the ninth frame. Ooh. And he got it. And you heard him. The follow, him. the follow through wasn't strong, but the direction was away perfect. So this one's going to go right down to the 10th frame with these two guys battling it out. Zazowski and Stab Nicky Matt on the four match winning streak with a chance to tie Mike Zarcon for the most beat the champ victories all on the line here in this final frame. He just needs good count to mark here and he's going to uh, defeat the champ. And a big strike by John Stab Nicky. That's going to be it. So the run for Matt Zazowski, as amazing as it was with a 267 average through our first four matches, comes to an end at the hands of a gentleman making his Beat the Champ debut. That's pretty amazing in itself. Well, Rick, maybe you're our uh, good luck charm here for fun stuff to happen when you're around. So well, maybe uh, Matt might not think that. <laughs> well, no, you're right. I'll let you take that up with Matt afterwards. But at least for the moment, it was a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you for some memories of the show and your memories of Sue and everything else. And Rick, you are certainly welcome to hang out with us here at the show anytime you want to. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. I do appreciate it. What a pleasure to have Rick Muzelowski join us here. So John Stob Nicky finishes it out. His final score will go on the board. And a nice round of applause for John as a very impressive 248 score is going to be enough to come up with a victory here. Final 10th frame here for Matt Szaszowski. Well, let's sum up that one, Sue. Yeah, I know. That's sure he's very disappointed because he really didn't miss the pocket. He didn't make a bad shot. His, his great carry really just went away. And you know, it's crazy. Three spares cost you the match. You know, I mean, that it, it just that's the kind of scoring that we've had going on here and the kind of bowling we've seen here. So. It's kind of just flip side because the people that he bowled also bowled well and also hit the pocket, and he just had more strikes in a row, which is what happened here. It's just more strikes in a row for John and made the difference. So what it'll allow is Matt's rival, Mike Zarcone, to at least at the moment maintain a one win advantage in our overall Beat the Champ win count for the year and three months that we have uh, resuscitated the show. Rick might have, a might have a point with that based on some of his wins from back in the day, but at least the 2016 and 17 version. Uh, it's Mike Zarcone on top, and a great round of applause, well deserved for Matt Zazowski, uh, an outstanding and incredibly impressive run from Matt that we saw him. Uh, you know, I'll talk to Matt in a moment here, but just sum up what you've seen over the last two well, weeks from he, Matt. He put on a clinic and really gave us a lot of stuff to talk about and a lot of insight for bowlers. Uh, there's a lot to learn from what we saw. There, there's no doubt he's he was in the pocket all day. Uh, the, the one time he missed a 10 pin, I think last week, the angle was wrong when he shot the 10 pin here. As soon as he puts it down, the angle's correct. The man, the man knew what he was doing, mm -hmm. and he had power behind it. Yes, he did. It's a 248 to 228 win for John Stop Nickley. We will talk with Matt about his amazing run when we return to Transit Lanes. You are watching Beat the Champ.
Well, the four match winning streak by Matt Zazowski, as amazing as it was, unfortunately comes to an end. That is the sport of bowling. Uh, take us through, uh, you know, you didn't put the 268 on the board in this one like you've been doing. What was the difference in this match? Uh, transition got me a little bit. When I changed to a sideboard, it's a little smoother, not smoother overall down the lane, not give away the pocket. The left lane got me jammed a little bit four pin. I tried to get around it a little bit to catch that dry and it left a weak time. So that ultimately was and John bowled a good game. So. Yep. Overall, the, 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 the nice little run here and then the great match with Zarcone sort of sum up the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, it's been fun. First time in five months and I can't complain. So no, it's no complaint. Good. A lot pretty of good. fun to watch. Thank we you. really enjoyed it. And Bill gets to give you a little money for your efforts as well. Three too. wins last week, a win today, a second place finish, 450. <laughs> nice job. Thank you. All right. Well, good. Thank Bill you. Bill Truman dishing out the cash here Thanks, to uh, Matt Zazowski. John Stobnicki gets to keep bowling his next match against Jeff Pullman is coming your way when Beat the Champ returns to Transit Lane. I'm here with Jeff Pullman. We've seen a lot of him and we've seen him bowl very consistently from house to house. What's your secret for that? Well, one of my uh challenges uh, in the last 10 years was I was just house uh, house bowling and I switched it up and went to travel bowling so we're consistently traveling in different houses and you're seeing different approaches and different uh, lane conditions synthetic versus wood so I just I, I've come to uh, tailor my game around that and my equipment and uh, it's been a success for me. Yes yeah, so we've seen a big difference with uh, with that from house to house you know we normally see some house bowlers but I see you all the time, so right. I know there must be some reason for that success. But you also bowl here too, so you've yeah. got a little advantage. Yeah, what absolutely. do you, yeah, what do you think um, you're going to see out there today as far as lane changes go? Well, what I've seen so far in the first week is uh, the guys are thrown inside. Um, they're, the oil is uh, breaking down. The lanes are opening up. Matt's throwing it outstanding. I bolt qualifying up the outside so I may transition you may see me throw the inside because uh, you go where the guys go that are winning well that experience is going to come in handy today then so good luck out there all right thanks the challenger in this match for John Stobnicki is that gentleman Jeff Pullman a rather familiar face here on beat the champ because Jeff is making his fourth Beat the Champ Show appearance. We just saw him last month at the Kearns Avenue Bowling Center. What Jeff is looking to do is break through and get his first Beat the Champ win. I know he's getting a little frustrated being, he was frustrated he wasn't making the show, now he's made the show, but he hasn't won yet, and I know that's the goal for here today. And he's bowled solid. He's, uh, I commented to him as we, before we started here, is he's made the show on some really different lane conditions, different surfaces, different lane conditions, and he's managed to rise to the top, which, you know, that's tough to do. Yes, it is. So here's John Stavnicki. How does he come back after the very impressive and huge victory over the Red Hot Matt Zazowski? We've talked a little bit about that. You get a big win. Now can you keep the momentum going, or is there a letdown? We'll find out. But John bowled very well with the 248-228 win over Zazowski in our last match. Well, it looks like he's ready, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, that's a good start. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Bill Truman's back with us here, the lane manager here at Transit Lanes. I want you to talk a little bit about what you've got going on here at Transit. Uh, uh, what's new? What's different? What uh, What's keeping you busy these days? Well, the leagues at this time of the year, it's getting near the end of them. Uh, so there's a lot of position rounds coming up, and it's always uh, an important time as, league, as the teams are trying to win their leagues. So mm -hmm. uh, they always want nice shots out there. We try to uh, help them with that. And... Uh, but they still have to throw the ball, so. Help right. us bowlers keep our averages up? We, we try, so that you're excited and want to come back again next year. Uh, but we do a lot of, uh, you know, we do specials uh, uh, for the bowlers. We have drink specials and food specials here at, uh, we have a full service uh, kitchen. And, mm -hmm. uh, so try to accommodate everybody to whatever their needs might be, whether it be eating or bowling or drinking. Well, those are the needs, and this, you know, <laughs> around here, those are the most, those, that's pretty, right at the top of the list there, depending on what order you want to put them in. Uh, yes, and sometimes <laughs> one will cause the other one. <laughs> that's right. Sometimes one affects the other one. <laughs> yes, it does. It very much, too. Well, you saw what happened there to John in the second frame here, leaving a couple of pins, and 
He'll only get one of them, and the body language tells you the disappointment there. So an open in the second for John Stopnicki, and that will open the door now for Jeff Pullman, who struck in the first. 43 years old from Clarence Center, a financial advisor with AXA Advisors here in Western New York. 35 years of experience, comes from a bowling family. We've seen his brother Joe on the show at one point earlier last year, and uh, like we said, Jeff's been a regular lately. Nice 228 average for him. Yes, he bowls here. Um, you know, Bill's talking about uh, putting out a nice condition and you know, bowling in the bowling center. He's one of the league bowlers here at Transit Lane, so he kind of has an idea of how he wants to play him and what his moves are going to be as he. Well, because we're using a house shot out here today, and that's generally what uh, they see every night. Even though the house shot, sometimes some bowlers will think that it's a little different. And like I said when we talked earlier, uh, heat and air conditioning and so forth, uh, and just our own. <laughs> ourselves could, could mm -hmm. make things different even though the lanes are all exactly the same from week to week they may just play a little differently and, and the lanes depending which lanes you're on also will play a little differently so there was a sticky seven pin for jeff pullman wobbled a little but wouldn't go down you know as much as you think of being um familiar with the house can be an advantage it can be a disadvantage too because you can assume what you're going to do next or what the changes would be but there's been a lot of play on these lanes and it's not and the thing that's with this, too, and you know from being on TV, the lights will, will play an effect, too. You've got a lot more heat out there than what they see during their league bowling. So um, with the fact that, you know, there's been some games on there and the, and the lights out there, uh, that can change some of the, right. some of how the ball will react out there. So sometimes, you know, it's not always an advantage to, to, um, to have a preconceived notion of what's happening. Like, this was John's first show. He didn't really have any idea what Beat the Champ was like. He didn't right. know what he was going to feel like. Didn't, doesn't really bowl league here until the summertime. And he handled and, it very well. Right. And he took on a guy, you know, he just he had a clear mind. He didn't have a, a thought process of what he was going to do, and it worked out well for him. So, so you're saying don't think too much? <laughs> Always I would need to say, not think too much? You know, well, you absolutely can't think. I'm just kidding. You do your thinking before you step up on the land. Absolutely. Take your deep breath. Mm -hmm. Throw the ball like you've thrown it for all the years that you bowl, and, uh, and you hope the results uh, show at the end, which yep. it did very much for John that time. So. Good bounce back from the open frame with a strike in the third for John Stobnicki. He's got his wife, his parents, his father-in-law here cheering him on. The 34-year-old from Buffalo, New York. 20 career 300 games and a high 846 series for John Stobnicki. And another nice strike. That's three of the first four for John Stobnicki. And the action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. All right, we're out here with the Pullman family. They came out to support Jeff today. How excited are you guys to be here? Real excited. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Do we like watching Jeff bowl? Yeah. yeah. And this is Jeff's son. What's your name? Brady. Brady. I hear you bowl too. Yep. Brady I bowl. Do. Uh, I bowl here on Saturday mornings, yeah. and I bowl for the Clarence Bowling Team. Very nice. We'll be seeing you soon on Beat the Champ, I bet, right? Yep. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you guys for coming out. I know Jeff really loves your support, and let's hope he wins. Yeah. <laughs> so who's the best Bill or Sabre bowler that you've come across through, your, uh, through the years? I know the answer to this one. Go ahead. <laughs> Bill's very good friends with Lindy Ruff. Lindy Ruff used <laughs> to be. Lindy's pretty in, good bowler, right? Used to be in here all the time. Bowler. They used to be in here practicing together, taking each other on, having. Did you guys bet money out there? Yeah, there might have been a little something put on the side. <laughs> Now, you know, I know Lindy is an incredibly competitive guy. We know him that way as a player. We know him that way as a coach. Is he equally as competitive as a bowler like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then, and there may have been like little wagers, but they <laughs> always needed to be paid off in front of all other people. Oh, <laughs> he, he always wanted to uh, let everybody know which way it went. And, uh, but he's a great sport. Well, we hope Lindy and the Dallas Stars have a nice run in the playoffs. I know it's been a bit of a difficult season for Lindy, um, but if they have a nice run, at least when he gets back here to town in the summer, you got to get him on the show here. <laughs> you know, we got to get Lindy. We either got to get him bowling or we got to get him sitting in your chair there because, uh, uh, you know, in my experience of covering sports in Western New York for almost 30 years, Lindy's right at the top of the list of the best people that I've ever dealt with. Yeah, and he's a great talker. He's great with the public and he's great with the people. And uh, win or lose, but uh, 
He's a great coach. Yeah, he was a favorite. Yeah. I have to say, just from my experience, that hockey players don't make the great bowl, make very great bowlers. <laughs> uh, he's right. Watkins from football is. is well, great I was going to ask you who yeah. the best, one of the better Bills guys he's, are. He's, he loves to bowl. A lot of the Bills here. guys yes. really like to bowl, don't they? Uh, yeah, but he was, he's the best that I've seen in here. Uh, but I can't say much for um, a lot of the hockey players. God, I'm <laughs> no, no, I don't know if. But what's they enjoy. The they have a great time the day they're here, and they and they they, they get to interact with the with the fans and with the people, and and that's there's nothing that can be said for that. That is great. So. Uh, we got a good match here. Yeah, big eighth frame Marty strike. Marty Brown was yeah. actually a very good bowler. Marty Brown was a very good bowler. Mm -hmm. also. Marty used to come up here also. Mm -hmm. But you got to talk about this match because we've got a really yes, we close do. going on. We're heading down the stretch of a very tight match. That was a big strike for Jeff in the eighth frame. It wasn't was. It? He had the one pin lead, and now he can put himself in a position to uh, just keep increasing that if he can double. He's got to figure out 11. He seems to have 12 down. 11s. Jeff's looking He's for his. He's in pretty tight here on 11. It's just having trouble with the picking out the. Oh. Big one. Big double there for Jeff Pullman as he's looking for his first beat the champ victory in his fourth appearance on the show. And that was a big step towards getting there. Let's yeah, see he how actually John moved, reacts. He actually moved his target just a hair to the right, kept his feet in the same place, and used a little bit more of the dry boards to get a little bit more hit. And it worked out. Got great pin action on that one. So here's the ninth frame for John Stobnicki. And a very important frame for him. The ninth frame always is, but this one is especially important. And a big strike there as well. So true, though. Almost, there's almost never a month that goes by where sometime within within the uh, matches, we talk about the importance of the ninth frame and it being the builder frame. Sure. And how a strike there can parlay into so many more pins because of the three three shots in the tenth. There's the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Deep Ram scoreboard, and we are headed right towards the tenth frame to determine this match. Here's John. He will bowl first. First throw of the tenth. I'll tell you that left lane has almost become a hair wet dry. A little bit, and, and Matty had talked about that, that lane 11 was the one that kind of was his downfall. <laughs> you know, throwing 220 is your downfall. Right. Uh, but he had bowled so well, but he always said 11 was, has given him a little bit of... Uh, it wiggles. So you gotta be pretty more, you gotta be exact. You gotta be pretty mm -hmm. accurate on that lane. Don't forget qualifying for next month's series of shows at Lucky Lanes of Fredonia going on this weekend. Details on the times available on our Facebook page at Beat the Champ. And the top qualifier this weekend at Lucky Lanes will win a $500 value brand new television from Dirt Cheap TV. And they will be the first bowler up when we tape on March 26th against the returning champ from transit, which is still to be determined. Might be one of these two guys if they go on a nice little run. So here's the final throw, 10th frame, and a bit of pin action, but not enough for John Stobnicki. And it's a 205 on the board for Stobnicki. So what does Jeff Pullman need to do to win? Well, he needs a mark for sure. A good count and a mark. He strikes out, he goes to 237. A strike will seal it for sure. Yes, it will. It's a mark. And it's nine pins on this one for Jeff Pullman, so he'll have to get the spare. The spare, he will have 205 also, and with an open. I mean, excuse me, I mean, if he should open, but uh, yes, he needs a spare to move on. Yep. So it comes down to this one for Jeff Pullman to get his first beat the champ victory. No pressure there. <laughs> no pressure. Sorry, Jeff. I think he's got it. it. <laughs> and a little clench of the pump of the fist there. And, uh, and the Pullman clan that's here cheering him on is happy and excited to watch Jeff advance on to next week's show. So finally the monkey off the back for Jeff. He gets that first important beat the champ win.
This is when you throw it down the middle, right, Bill? Yeah, that's <laughs> this is the one where you just get, get it down there. I don't really care what it turns out to be. But it's a win for Jeff Coleman and a shake of the hands with John Stop Nikki. Good match between these two gentlemen and a victory for Jeff at 215 to 205. He's moving on. We will talk to both guys about this match and preview next week's edition of Beat the Champ from here at Transit Lanes. You've got to wait an extra week before we get to see you. But Looking John, forward but, to it. Yeah, but Bill, thank you very much for joining us. Thank Sue you. Sue and I are back in a moment. You're watching Beat the Champ. Well, a terrific match that comes right down to the 10th frame gives Jeff Pullman the victory over John Stobnicki. A lot of pressure on you there right down to the end. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. Uh, that strike in the 10th, and I, I, you hate to see your ball go right over your mark, and you just miss it just a hair at the ball. It just doesn't come back. Right. Well, let's talk about your win, though, that got you into that match, you know, knocking off the red-hot Matt Sazowski, who had been just ripping through people. <laughs> uh, talk about how satisfying that was. It was very satisfying. I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little intimidated when I came in, you know, but once I got the first few shots out of the way, I, I felt comfortable. Right. Well, Bill's got a little bit for you as well, too. Thank a you. win, a second place. Nice job. Appreciate yeah. it. Good job, John. And, Sue, you finally get to hang out with <laughs> Jeff over there. Jeff, keeping up the trend of great matches here yes. at Transit Lanes. Uh, finally got that monkey off your back. How's it feel? Feels great. It really does. Uh, it's the first match I've thrown uh, with no opens, so I feel uh, I've accomplished my goal, and uh, John threw a great match. It just came down to uh, our carry, and... Uh, you know, I had uh, 10 more pins than he did. Little uh, lane 11, a little tricky. Yeah, they were. I mean, it was it was just a matter of how the lane, the ball was reading the lanes, just slightly different, and we were both dealing with it, uh, crossing each other uh, on the lane. So I'm just uh, happy to come out on top. Well, good job figuring it out. Thanks. Right. All right, well, Jeff Pullman's not done because we'll see him next week when three new challengers will try to knock that trophy out of the hands of Jeff Pullman. Sue and I will preview next week's match. When we return, you're watching Beat the Champ at Transit Lane. Well, another good week of Beat the Champ Bowling here at Transit Lanes. We had Matt Sazowski come up with a win. I don't know that anybody thought anybody was going to beat him, but he loses. Jeff Pullman comes up with a win. Consistency, though, in high scores is what we're seeing here. Yeah, and yet really solid matches, really close matches where you have to stay tuned and make sure you see what happens because nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, nothing's guaranteed. Well, we know we're guaranteed to have another big contingent of Pullman family Definitely. here to cheer us. You had a chance <laughs> to talk to them. How much fun was that? That was awesome. They just, they're so supportive and they're so proud of him and we can't wait to see more from him uh, next week. Yeah, well, it's Jeff Pullman going to be back next week. Three new bowlers will challenge him. So we will see you on Beat the Champ from Transit Lanes in one week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend.